So I'm now joined by Ali Nadi, Head of Sales from Agora. How are you doing this morning? I'm great, you know. Uh, so great to be here, you know, with all, all the, the uh, app of game developers. So it's been a while, a while so we've all been like expecting, you know, those events to, to, to come back. So I'm very excited. Getting back into the swing of things. Well, if folks aren't familiar with Agora and what you guys do, what's the, what's the slug line? What do you guys do? So basically we enable uh, creators, developers, but also like fortune, uh, big fortune, like 500 companies to embed uh, real-time interaction within their, their apps uh, in order to build new revenue streams or creating more retention, stickiness, etc. So that's what we do. Well, one of the main questions I always have when talking to people who deal in this kind of technology is lots of people have apps open in one window and they have Discord in the background or Skype or Gchat or whatever it might be. So people are quite attached to these third party services that focus on this. From your perspective, what's the benefit of integrating this kind of tech into the apps themselves? Do you see a benefit for the folks who are creating these apps or for some people, is it like an extra layer of complication they don't need? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. So actually, on the, the answer I will say is, would be quite obvious, especially on mobile. So imagine how difficult it would be like to open like multiple apps. I'm not even sure now how that could be possible, but at least you know, it would be like very much uh, resources consuming. So like whether it's the battery, CPU or memory, uh, that's not necessarily a great experience for, for the players or users, right? So having multiple apps open uh, on going from a game to an app on mobile is, is not like the best experience you can, you can imagine, right? Uh, so really like building uh, in-app uh, on embedded uh, form of interaction, that, that's the best experience that you can offer to the players uh, in, in general. Uh, from an end user point of view, right? From a publisher or developer point of view, uh, there are like much more uh, advantages into it. So whether it's uh, retention or acquiring new users, uh, you can imagine that if you are playing a game and uh, you want to invite friends or family that are not familiar with like, platforms like Discord, it's much more easier for them to just jump into the game or open, open an account and start playing. Right? It's, the experience is much more seamless. Right? Well, you cite some statistics on your site which shows that users will spend up to an average of like 2.5 times longer per session if there is some kind of in-game chat or in-game video. Uh, is that something that you've seen like proven across the board? And if that's true, is the solution to get people to stay in your game, just add chat, even where it's not needed, just throw chat in there and people will stick around? Yeah, so, so basically, it's all about engagement, right? The more uh, interactive the experience is, the more engaging, you know, the, the game or the experience is, right? So, so obviously, the, the session time is will, will get longer than if you're just not interacting or playing without any sort of uh, communication with others. Um, just imagine like the time that someone could spend on on a phone call or on, or on WhatsApp or on a video chat, for example, or on TikTok, for example, you know, the session time are very, very, uh, very long. So we definitely see a direct impact on the, on the, on the engagement, on the session time, you know, directly from those uh, type of features. Do you think there are any use cases where this kind of tech isn't really suitable? Because a lot of stuff that we do is still, you know, solo experiences. There's no, not necessarily any need to have like chat built into Excel or something like that. But in some ways, with the introduction of cloud documents, people do wind up weirdly communicating with these, when everyone's in the edit at the same time, we've all seen, you know, text appearing in Google Docs. So people end up using this tech to communicate anyway. But are there, are there softwares or programs or even games that you think it's not suitable? Or do you think there is always an argument to use this kind of tech? Yeah, I think uh, that's a good question because, you know, when when we started going deeper into the gaming industry, uh, we, we started to understand like the different like game genres on, on, on use cases, etc. So of course, you know, video and voice chat will be much more suitable for multiplayer games. 
but actually not only because you can also uh, think about like live streaming. Okay. So what we do for or the capabilities that that are available to you within the live uh, interaction uh, 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 type of experience are like either text messaging or or voice chat, video chat, or live streaming, right? So if you think just about like uh, text messaging, it might be not suitable if you need like to be really like playing into the game or immersed into the game. So you can't in in the same time like text chat on, on play. It's a quite a difficult experience. It's it's actually much more easier to just voice chat. So that's something that uh, we have seen uh, with, with gaming studios. But uh, when the game actually is not multiplayer or single player. We have we found out that there are like many games that are single player, but they still have like some small chat rooms before the game, where players can interact and give you know some tricks with each others or or challenges. So that's like a way for those games to build some communities around the game, so which actually could be like a good uh, 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 acquisition channel as well. Uh, the other uh, way. Uh, to use live interaction or live streaming, even uh, within single-player games, is uh, live interactive or live uh, or live streaming. So you can play a single-player player game and use Agora in order to live stream your your game into uh, third-party platforms like YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, etc., with a much higher uh, 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 video and voice quality whatever device your end users are using, whatever countries they, they, they are from, they will always experience a very high, high level, you know, uh, uh, quality. I feel like voice chat is far more prevalent on PC and console at the moment. And I, whenever I see chat being used in games on mobile, it tends to almost always be text. Is there a kind of barrier to comfortably using voice chat on your phone? because people don't tend to plug in headphones and things like that. Have you noticed that people don't really use that? Or are you, are you seeing that actually taking off now? Are people starting to use voice comms when they're playing games on mobile? Yeah, we, we are not only seeing like voice chat taking off, but also video chat into mobile games. A good example for that is Monopoly uh, from Marmalade Studio. Uh, so they started you know, using video chat into the Monopoly game. So any game you can think about being a social game or that you you used to play like physically is is a, is the perfect you know fit on, on the, the best the best user experience that you can offer. So we have seen like good traction you know whether it's from casino game or poker game like Poker Face, uh, Bunch as well, uh, which, which have, have been a pioneer you know into uh, video chat gaming uh, type of experiences. But uh, I think it's much it's more on more. Uh, uh, it, it becomes more and more normal right now, you know, to chat or voice chat to games. Well, yeah. I'm guessing that the pandemic and the fact that everyone had to fall back on voice chat and video chat in order to stay connected has had an impact on people's mindset. For the games that you guys uh, host or the games that developers you guys work with, did you notice a change in behavior? Yes, actually, uh, pre-COVID, you know, we, we already had like some good traction from the gaming space, but uh, uh, during the COVID, it, it, it made things much more, I would say, easier on, on normal, you know, to, to be using voice or video chat. So a lot of the gaming studios that were a bit hesitant before the COVID, they were just like, you know, started to use more voice on voice chat. And we have seen like usage uh, exploding uh, within the gaming space during the last two years on, uh, until now. So especially now going into, I think, uh, we are going to go deeper into it, but into the metaverse type of use cases on VR, that will be like even even bigger. So how do you take what you've gained in some ways, or the, the fact that everyone's become very tied and connected to voice and video chat over the last two years, how do you make sure that they stay connected going forward into the future? Is, is there a way of like holding on to these customers, or do you feel like people will gradually drift back into pre-pandemic lifestyle habits? Uh, there's always this question about like uh, post-COVID or pre-COVID. So I think that I don't think so because you know I joined like Agora like more than three years ago, and I, I am in this space for more than five years now. 
So we always had like uh, good traction from different type of verticals. Of ga uh, gaming was actually one of our, our, our top uh, uh, verticals. Uh, I think it's going to stay, and where we are, we are seeing uh, 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 we are see seeing good indicators that shows us that this is going to stay. Uh, yeah, I, I mean it's, it's just like. It's just like too much advantages for, for a game to just get rid of like voice or video chat. Once it's it's there, you know, it, you know, it you can you can prove the benefit right away, whether it's on the session time or the new the new money uh, the new monetization channels that you are opening. When you think about it, you know, there are like some uh, uh, revenue streams that are not available outside of those communication channels. Let's voice filters, for example. So you can sell voice filters uh, in a voice chat experience. Like uh, 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 on, on, on players are, are willing to pay for it. You can you can sell uh, 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 face notification filters, avatars, uh, different features like 3D positional audios, etc. Uh, on, on top of all other like monetization streams that you have. But those like monetization uh, uh, features are only available within those specific channels, right? So, which is at the end like more revenue for developers and more revenue for studios.